Hello boys and girls, today we will discuss cell wall. According to W. H. Whitaker, there are five kingdoms, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. Accepting Animalia, the other four groups has a cell wall, but in our book, Plantae and Fungi are given. Alright, that does not mean that the other two kingdoms do not have a cell wall. Alright, but we will discuss whatever is there in the book. First of all, we will discuss the functions of the cell wall. Now, in the book, there are four functions given. The first function, let me give you an explanation. So, this is a bottle having a definite shape. Similarly, this is another bottle having a definite shape of its own. But the two shapes, the two bottles have different shapes. Why? It is because of the rigid wall that it has. Similarly, a cell wall gives a definite shape to the cell. Alright? So the function, the first function is it gives the shape to the cell. That is, it gives shape to the cell. The second function. Now, I have some bottles inside. I mean, I have some water inside. Why doesn't this water get damaged or gets polluted? It's because of the presence of this wall. So, the inner content, the content of the cell, the content of this bottle is protected by the wall. Similarly, the cell wall protects the cell from mechanical damage and infection. Alright? Now, do not forget, in an organism, in a multicellular organism, there are many cells interacting to one, cell, one another and lying one beside others. Now, one cell and the next cell, there is an interaction between the cells. This cell interaction, this cell interaction is also helped by the cell wall. That is the third function of the cell wall, which is it helps in cell to cell interaction. Alright? Now, what if any undesirable material goes inside the cell? The cell might get damaged. In order to prevent that, the cell wall is present. So, the cell wall also acts as a barrier to undesirable macromolecules. That is the fourth function. So, these are the four functions given in our book. There are many other functions, with, but we, we are sticking to our textbook here. The first function, the second one, the third one and the fourth one. Alright? Now, what are the chemical constituents? Now, it depends upon which cell the cell wall is present in. Like, if it is an algae, do not forget, algae are lower plants. Then, if it is fungi, or if it is higher plants. So, the chemical constituents are all different. In algae, it is made up of cellulose, galactans, mannans, and minerals like calcium carbonate. Alright? And in other plant cells, it is made up of cellulose, hemicellulose, pectins, and proteins. Well, the main constituent, the main component of a fungal cell wall is chitin. Alright? So, that is the chemical components. The next point that we are going to learn is the types or layers of the cell wall. So, what are the components of a cell wall? What are the constituents of a cell wall? How many layers are there in a cell wall? Now, let me give you, let me draw you 
some neighboring cells. I'm drawing you the cell wall, all right? Assume this are cell wall. So I have given many cells, three layers. So a cell wall has two to three layers. Sometimes it might go up to four in some books, all right? The first layer of a cell wall is called the middle layer. Middle layer. And the second wall is the primary wall. The third one is the secondary wall. And in some books, you will find a tertiary wall also. But here we will be discussing only these three. The middle layer, primary wall and the secondary wall. Let me draw you the enlarged Let me enlarge you this part. This is cell A and this is cell B. This will be the A part. This will be the B part. This is the wall of the A. This is the wall of the B. Between A and B, there is a layer called the middle lamella. Middle lamella is made up of pectin compounds of calcium and magnesium. And due to the presence of this calcium pectides and magnesium pectides, the middle lamella is responsible for hardness of plants, hardness of plant tissues. Like you take any plant part, you press it, it is hard due to these substances. However, when a fruit is ripe, it becomes soft. Why? Now, softening of ripe fruits is due to certain plant hormones which solubilize, which solubilize these compounds that causes softening of ripe fruits. So this is the middle layer part. All right. So we have the middle layer, middle layer. The next one is the primary wall. Primary wall of cell A and primary wall of cell B is the black part. It is the living part. This is the primary wall, primary wall. And this is the living part. That is, if any growth happens, it is due to an increase in the number of cells. Alright? It is capable of growth and it gradually diminishes as the cell membranes, as, as, as the cell matures. Alright? So when a cell gets matured, the primary will, wall will get diminished or will get will not be seen anymore. The next one, secondary one, is the dead part. However, growth happens. How? Due to material deposition. Depending upon how much material is being deposited, the secondary wall has several layers. Like in the A part, let us say, it has two layers. This is the secondary wall part. It has two layers. The first one S1, S2, and it will go on. And in the B part, let us say, it has one, two, three secondary wall layer, namely S1, S2, S3, and it goes on. If it has many. All right? So due to the position of substances, the secondary wall is thick. And this thickness is uneven. Like, at some point, at some part of the cell wall, 
there might not be any thickening due to which it leaves a depression which is called pit pit no 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 this pit is different all right this pit is in morphology here we are discussing about pit a depression usually pit occurs in pairs like if here is a pit there will be a corresponding pit in the neighboring cell like in b there might be a corresponding pit as well that makes two pits which is called pit pairs do not forget pits usually occurs in pairs but uh, there might be a single pit also there might be a single pit like this a pit if it occurs singly is said to be blind pit all right now do not forget substances are going to be transported through or maybe outside this cells let us say in order to transport a substance called uh, mr x from the outer part to the inner part or maybe from the inner part to the outer part it has to go in two pathways number one it might go not inside the cell but outside the cells like this or or the same eggs might go into the cell pass through the cell like this now in this case it has passed from a to b now how and where will this passage of substances take place let us say from a to b it might go like this it might go like this or the substance might go like this so there are three possibilities from one two and three which one would be the easiest let us say three it is very thick because there are full secondary walls here here there is a few secondary wall like the secondary wall of only cell b but in the first case there is no secondary wall at all so it is the thinnest part so passage of substances from a to b will be easiest in the number one area all right so this is the highest possibility of substance passing from a to b that is blind no no where, wherever there are pit pairs so that means from a to b there seems to be a bridge the bridge between the cytoplasm of a and between the cytoplasm of b so this bridge is said to be cytoplasmic bridge this is too english right we need a biological term for this there's a biological term which is called plasma this mata all right so plasma this mata is the part through which substances passes so that means in this bridge in order to pass substances there are small tube like structures the tube like structures are called desmo tubules there are small tube like structures so through the desmo tubules in the plasma desmetal region substances passes as i said there are two way of transport one through the cytoplasm by passing through the cell wall and another without passing into the cell without going into the cell so due to the presence of plasmodes mata between adjacent cells it seems like all the cytoplasms of all the cells are connected to one another that makes a continuous col column of the cytoplasm that is called to be a cytoplasmic continuum which is called symplasm that is why transportation through the symplasm is said to be a symplast transport while transportation not through the symplasm that is without going into the cell is said to be the apoplast transport 
So this is the Simplast pathway and the Epoplast pathway. So do not forget the cell wall is concerned with what? Cell to cell interaction as well. All right. So in the next video, we'll be discussing the cell membrane. Thank you very much.